Now, for your dramatic entertainment, we bring you Armchair Theatre. Ma, I've got an unidentified target, zero, two, zero, fifty miles. Oh, do relax, Sergeant Padmore. It's only Embassy 25 estimating the field at 49. Oh. Sorry, Ma. But why do you want levers? Something gone wrong with your seniority? No, with me. Hello, Chartwell Radar. This is Embassy 25. Request Queenie Doc Mike, over. Embassy 25, this is Chartwell Radar. Say again. He asked for a QDM, Sergeant. Look here, Embassy I know you must be depressed five. about something, so how about an afternoon on the river and having a long chat, eh? Get it off your chest. Wings, stop feeling sorry for me. Why do you suddenly want to get back to Sirius Street? Embassy 25. It's me, old girl. Well, what do you hope to find? Light. Light? A bit of light. Hmm? You'll find that in City Street? I've nowhere else to look now. I will take you out on the boat, you know. I'm not kidding. We could stop off at um, Cookham for tea. You depress me, Wink. I do. I may not have much to offer, but to go out with you again would make me feel positively bankrupt. for him to do a belly row with his obsolete equipment, Sergeant, so don't get upset at losing him on the RT. He can't expect a letdown if he doesn't carry the frequencies. Flight Officer Inskip. Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Oh, Flying Officer Sheldrake, take over, would you please? Oh, yes, ma'am. And the squadron leader's waiting for an ETA on his king-size tent. I'll advise him, ma'am. Thank you, Daphne. She's free at 2.30. Uh, Daphne? No, Wink. I've had this drifting with the tide business with you before. Ah, but Cookham is non-tidal, old girl. Oh. It wouldn't be like last time at all. Well, just for tea, then. Come in. Oh, good morning, Audrey. Do sit down. Might I stand, please, ma'am? <coughs> You've got lipstick on your teeth. Yes, stand if you like. You've heard, haven't you, ma'am? Oh, my new 38-inch roll-on. So much for optimism. I saw my waist in my long mirror this morning. It was hanging over the top of my skirt. Reminded me of those apple pies my mother used to make. White puff pastry drooping over the edge of an enamel dish. And she'd slice round and give me the hanging bits to make current men. I wish I could make current men from my hanging bits. When do I leave, ma'am? <clears throat> the right. Your application for discharge from the Women's Royal Air Force is rejected. Here is the official notification. Yes. Yes. Right. So you will have to serve your yes. remaining five years. Yes. Right. Now don't pull down the corners of your mouth, Audrey. It's very aging. When a girl is nearing 30, she has to watch these little items. Audrey, I think it's only fair to tell you that when I forwarded your application last month, I advised the powers that be not to grant your release. I told them you were merely passing through a phase of feminine depression. I don't feel feminine at all. That's why I want to get out. I'm just an adding machine. Don't split hairs, Audrey. It's naughty. Now, Audrey, 
You know in your heart of hearts that you belong in the RAF. It is everything that a girl like you could possibly want. Security, yet adventure. Independence, yet she's never alone. But I want to be alone. Lonely Miss Inskip. Not Flight Officer Inskip, the calculator with the bow legs. Bow legs? Who's dared to say that one of my girls had bow legs? Who said it? I'll have his guts for garters. Anyway, it's not true. Barbara Burnley, who has bow legs. Yes, well, maybe it was her they were talking about. But anyway, she's at home in this light blue world, and I'm not. I want to get out and become a normal woman again. But I've been in light blue ever since 1939, and I'm quite normal. Audrey, don't you realize the security of this country lies in our air defenses? Britain's safety depends upon people like you. Can't they depend on somebody else? Well, why do you want to leave us? Marriage? Who to? Well, I don't know. Perhaps one of your fellow officers. I scared every man on the camp. You know how their eyes glaze over after ten minutes with me. Ah, uh, that's because they think you're making fun of them. You can't do worse to a man than to hurt his ego. Of course, I understand why you do it. After your dreadful letdown in Civil Street, you must distrust all men. Mom, I just want to get out, not to get married. I just want to try and find some fulfillment. And I think I might do that as a civilian. And now you tell me I can't... Audrey, get out. if you'd wanted to get married, naturally, I would have recommended your discharge. In fact, I've even encouraged you in this uh, field. I rearranged a whole duty roster so that you could go and watch Chuck Patterson play polo at Windsor. Now then. You would want to marry him. Spend every Sunday treading down his divots. Well, oh, what about squadron leader Wink Wagstaff, then? I've heard you have many jolly chats with him over the RT. He took you to the Hunt Ball. Did his eyes glaze over? No. Well, there you are, then. Mine did. I'd rather stay in the WAF and collect my OBE. Audrey, don't you see? Wherever you go, wherever you work, happy romance will be difficult for you. Because although you may be physically attractive, you did get a double first at Cambridge. And that makes most men feel inferior. But Chuck Patterson was inferior. Oh, Audrey. You're a brilliant mathematics officer, but as a woman, you're very naive. Mom, I just want to get out. Not to find a man. Not? No, I just want to find myself. And you will, Audrey. Here, take my word for it as a woman of the world, Audrey. You're much better with us than without us. Now, you're just passing through a phase of depression. I've gone through these long black tunnels of despair, so I do know what I'm talking about. You'll perk up as soon as the new draft of lightning pilots arrive. You'll find a kindred spirit with one of them. I have every confidence. I remember feeling so exactly the same when I was your age. I was a parachute packer at Biggin Hill during the Battle of Britain. Forty-two parachutes we had, all ready and no one to wear them. I used to stock take every day I never forgot. And then one day, out of the blue, the new draft of Spitfire pilots arrived. My dear, suddenly it was all worthwhile. Of course, I was a mere slip of a girl at the time. I remember one particular afternoon. I... <clears throat> Meanwhile, if I find out the person who said that one of my girls has bow legs, his feet won't touch the ground on the way to the garden. That is all, Audrey. You may resume duties. doing? The bitter's cloudy. 
We're getting seepage from that canal. It's that new lock keeper. He's too old for the job. You better tell him. Well, Tip wins this battle, then. Good morning, Governor. And what a lovely morning to be alive. Yeah. Top of... Oh, my cocktail cherry, sir. Uh, just a courtesy call. How are you today, sir? Yeah. Uh, good. Uh, very glad to hear it, sir. And the wife? She's been living with a gasman for the past ten years. Ah, uh, well, uh, this is just a courtesy call, sir. I'm not chasing an order, but top her cherries, make the occasion, remember? As I expect you've seen in our television advert. I'm down here 16 hours a day. What chance have I got to watch telly, eh? Tell me. Uh, no chance. You've had it, yeah. actually. Yes. Well, uh, the main reason I'm calling on you today, sir, is to introduce you to a new playmate to our cherries. Topper Gherkins, made for your leisure. What a dreadful sight. And at this hour of the morning, too. Yeah. Looks like some of the dogs left. Really? Where are Mr. Tommy? They're not down here. Oh, yes, here they are. A new venture for us, actually, sir. Uh, Gherkins, uh, launched only six weeks ago, they've sold like hot cakes because they're sweet, yet astringent. Uh, yes. Uh, they retail at one and ninepence, sir, uh, giving you fivepence clear on every bottle. What's that funny smell of cider? Cider! The barrel's leaking! Well, cork it up! What with? Corks! They're too big! God, it's like Flanders down here. Well, ram some of those cocktail cheddars in the hose. We've had 16 bottles down there for months. <laughs> I thought they'd come in handy sometime. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, fivepence on every bottle. And where are me brown? Which is doubled if you sell them with our cherries in our new twin pack. Now, in this see-through twosome pack, both cherries and gherkins retail at... I don't want the bitter tax till tonight! I ain't touching it! I'm tapping it! Well, stop it! Three and tuppence. They can, of course, be served individually over the bar with our new Proteus dispenser. Yes, sir? They are both very versatile products. Each jar is fitted with our new, easy-to-open screw cap. Our special, patent applied for, easy-to-open cap. Go on, matey. The suspense is killing. Just flick the wrist and twist. Press down. But, as I say, sir, either together or apart, both cherries and gherkins stand on their own two feet, uh, sail-wise. Yeah. I bet those gherkins could walk on their own two feet, pong-wise. Well, uh, this is just a courtesy call, sir, uh, just to introduce you to our new line. Uh, shall I put you down for a dozen trial bottles, sir? I'll put you down if you do. And a firkin a mile for the dark team outing. Would they fancy a firkin of gherkin? Now, don't you come it with me, Nibbo. I've had it extracted from me by experts, so don't you try it, that's all. Just a passing joke, sir. To help the day along. Well, just you keep on passing, because my day doesn't need any helping. All the best then, sir. Uh, take care of yourself. The way things are going, nobody else will. <laughs> oh! Your firkin. Oh. My gherkins are floating. Are you sitting down with a customer? What? Oh, sorry. Half a bit, please. Do you mind if I sit here to sort it out? No. Your drink, sir. Eleven Oh, dear. The gherkin juice is dripping on your skirt. I am sorry. Uh, look, miss, I have this one on me. To make me feel better for ruining your skirt. Buying me a double gin wouldn't make you feel any better. You know, there I fancy frolic for the two. Thirty thinks you're wrong, mm -hmm. Should be about seven to two. A mm. double gin and, and a bit of lemon, anyway, please. that's a favourite place. They've won there for the last three years. They always do. Are you making a career of this pub or just a hobby? I beg your pardon, madam. Say it again. Yes. Yeah. Pity the poor bookmakers, eh? <laughs> Uh, five and a penny, madam. Gin will always cloud if you dilute it with tap water. I beg your pardon, madam. It's been diluted with tap water. That's a perfectly good gin, madam. I've got a hydrometer in my handbag. 
Well, we, uh, we don't dilute our gin with tap water. Not here, madam. No, you shouldn't. You should use distilled water if you must fiddle the gin. It will uncloud then, you see, because alcohol assimilates distilled water without changing its translucency. Uh, yes, madam, it, uh, it must have been our new barman. I'm very sorry, madam. I'll, I'll sack him as soon as he comes in tonight. Uh, have, uh, have another one on the house. A uh, new one, of course. I will. Thank you. Have you really got a hydrometer in your handbag? Sorry to be nosy. I just wondered. I wasn't trying to make conversation. I haven't. But dishonesty makes me angry and I say anything. I just wanted to say thank you for getting one over on the landlord. He routed me. Why do you suppose that was? I really couldn't say. You could try. You have a very furtive manner. Okay. Okay. You have a... When you were talking to the landlord, you didn't sound as if you believed in your gherkins at all. I don't believe in them. They're too dear, for one thing. But it's your job to sell them. Yes? So the first thing you've got to do is to sell yourself. Now, when you came in... Oh, don't stop. Please go on. I uh, don't get embarrassed. I, I, I'd like to know. Well, you have a very furtive, erratic kind of manner. When you came in, you came in uh, like an escaped convict. You should walk slowly, like a policeman. This inspires confidence. I'm sorry to let you. Goodbye. Please don't go. Uh, have a drink. Can I buy you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Thank you. Please. Uh, no, uh, thank you very much. Please, I, I should be going in five minutes anyway. Well, I'll only insult you again. Well, you couldn't insult me, and nobody ever can. I've had my foot caught in too many closing doors. I'll hurt your ego. I won't mean to. It'll just come out. I uh, haven't got any ego. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse Please. me. Just one. And you've got a job to do. I, I, I can't. Uh, smashed all my samples. I don't have anything to show anybody now. My other samples are in my shed. I share a flat with this bloke in High Wycombe and I have use of shed. I see. I help my landlord rent from a kit, you see. So he lets me store my samples in it. Not many samples, just three cardboard boxes. They're not in anybody's way. Oh, good. Not in anybody's way at all. I do enjoy your company. You see, in two minutes, you've made me think about myself more seriously than I've ever done in my life before. I don't need sympathy. I just want you to have a drink. Just a quick one, then. Splendid. Uh, large gin and a uh, bitter lemon, please. They're just coming. I wish you were selling my cherries. How do I? Why? What do you do? I'm in the WAF. Oh, what do you do? I'm a controller. An officer and a gentleman. <laughs> I was a lance corporal in the RASC myself. Your drink, sir. Five and a penny. Yeah. I said I wasn't officer material. Quite rightly. Do you enjoy being called madam? Is that hat going to a wedding? Oh, I think it has been. But they didn't invite me with it. Still, I'm not grumbling. Shan't put my head in the gas oven. I tried to gas myself once. Why? My fiancé. Why am I telling you? I've never told anyone before. Who are you? I'm Bill Hemmings from High Wycombe. I've told what, no one, nobody. Huh? I was too ashamed, you see. You were? I've told you now. I've told you. And I don't feel ashamed. You uh, tried to... Why is it? Why have I told you a complete stranger? And you are a stranger, aren't you? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yes, uh, I earn 15 pounds a week plus a shilling in the pound commission. Does that help? I mean, now you know all about me. Uh, I share a flat with this bloke in the high wicket. Oh, no, I've told you that. Am I making you nervous? I don't blame you. People are usually nervous talking to me. 
I took a postal course on how to win friends, and now I'm even nervous talking to myself. I'm not nervous. Oh, no. I made both my ex-fiancés very twitchy. They said I was a nutter, and that if they married me, they wouldn't know where their next meal was coming from. Quite right, too. Thirteen jobs I've had in the last three years. Oh, how lovely. I wish I'd had thirteen jobs. Have a nice schooner. On me. See? I can do it now. Just what I needed. Yes. Thirteen jobs in three years. Do you know my life's ambition? No, no, of course you don't. I've only just met you. Well, it's to get one full insurance card. Twelve years I've been on the road and never done it yet. Almost did it once, when I was selling skirts. And then in my fiftieth week with the same firm, Paris dropped the hemline. Just about to unload twenty-four very short skirts I was from Mr. Bunch in Leeds, <laughs> when his secretary brought in the evening paper. Big headline. The Paris drops the hemline. Dropped me right in it, too. I got the sack. <laughs> just two weeks to go. Just two blank spaces on my card. My boss said I should have persuaded Mr. Bunch. It was just a passing phase. I wish I could keep laughing like you. Well, you've got to. Otherwise, it's, it's all so painful. Lily, have another drink. No. No, thank you. Oh. I was trying for the canal, but I got it in a timber barge. Just think. By this time next week, my bottle might be in Manchester. And you'd like to be with it? Yes. How do you know? You know nothing at all about me. Enough? But I'm a complete stranger to you. Women say that to their husbands after 25 years. Come on, uh, have another drink. Uh, just to wish your bottle bon voyage. I don't care if it is a double. Well, just one for the road, then. Oh, splendid. Then again, please. Look, I, I uh, had to pay a garage to change a wheel this morning. Uh, didn't have a wheel brace, you see. So I'll, uh, I'll find the post office and draw out some cash. Will you hold on? Oh, here. Take this. No, I, I daren't. The landlord already thinks I'm a pond. Oh, please. I've had a backdated ride. Oh. Well, in that case, uh, just as I draw some out. Yes, I'll take it. No pride, you see. Six shillings. What sort of a bloke was he, your fiancé? He was my mathematics tutor at Cambridge. You went off him? He went off me. It's all go, isn't it? I wish I'd seen your television advert. There isn't one. I just say that to give the product prestige. What do you do, exactly? Well, I watch. That's my job, just watching. Secret, is it? Mm, sort of. Oh. I wish I did something secret and mysterious. The only mystery in my life is why I can't fill up just one insurance card. You know, in 50 years from now, when all of us here are mingling with the dust of ages, I'm going to ask whoever's in charge whatever became of all my unstamped cards, because I want to get them and soak all the stamps off and make one full one, just one full card with no naked week showing. I do like people with big obsessions about trifles. And you keep on trying, won't you? You've got that kind of faith. Oh, no, don't take them, Mick. People usually listen to me as though they were humoring a drunk, you know. Looking away, nodding too much. But that's exactly what they do with me. They don't. They do, really. You? With those big brown eyes? But I've got a viper tongue to go with them, you see. You haven't bitten me. It's only a matter of time. <laughs> Beryl, my second fiancé, said I had a face that was made to be overlooked. My fiancé, my only one, said he... He couldn't sort me out. And he caught the Flying Scotsman back to Banff three days before our wedding. I never saw him again. And I waited and waited. I loved every bit of him, you see. But I got nervous waiting and going to the church every day, so I got a shilling for the gas and stuffed the chimney up with magazines and turned the gas on. But the gas kept escaping past the shiny pages. I should have used newspapers, you see, but I only had glossy magazines. I lived that sort of life. Well, then my landlady turned me out, uh, because she smelled the gas, oh, I don't blame her. So then I thought the only thing I could do was to join the Foreign Legion and forget, like Lottle and Hardy. <laughs> but they don't have a Labour's auxiliary in the Foreign Legion, so I joined the West. You're not looking, Blaze. How nice of you. Not nice at all. I'm hanging on every word. Oh, it's you taking the mick now. No, straight up. What happened? Well, I've been in three years now and getting by, you know, and then suddenly... 
last month I realized that I was running away from my failure. I want to get out now and try and get the better of it, but they won't release me. How would you uh, get the better of it, exactly? Well, by being a normal woman again. Oh, dear, if this was a mathematical problem and not an emotional one, I could tell you quite simply. It's just that I want to try and find some fulfillment. Oh, get married, you mean? Oh, no, I don't think marriage is in my stars. I realized that very clearly when I was 24 and lying in hospital. I had plenty of time to think then, you see. Hospital? Yes, I got some of the gas on my chest, but I didn't get arrested or anything because they never found the glossy magazines up the chimney. They're still there. Oh, no. I think somebody would have noticed the smoke when they lit the fire, wouldn't you? Yes. No, I don't suppose they're still there at all. No. No. Pity about you not liking marriage. Because I think that having a baby is a woman's greatest fulfillment. Having a baby and bringing it up, trying to make it a better person than you are. A baby? A baby? What are you looking like that for? A baby! Of course! I don't have to have a husband at all. I never thought of that. I could be fulfilled and get out of the RAF all on the same day. But that's a wonderful idea. I'll have a baby. You will. Yes, I'd make a very good mother. I'd feed it properly and give it a regular routine and, and love it and, and take it to the clinic. Of course, that's a marvelous idea. I can't think why it didn't occur to me before, but I've been so immersed with quadratic equations that I couldn't see the wood for the trees. And it wouldn't upset anybody, you see, because my parents were killed in the war when I was evacuated to an aunt. Look, uh, she brought me up and she died last year, so I haven't got anybody to answer to but myself. Oh, I'm so glad I had a drink with you. But you can't have a baby just like that. A single girl. How would you live? Well, I've saved up 214 pounds since I've been in the RAF. Now, I could live on that while I was expecting it. And afterwards, I could go part-time to one of the nine firms who wanted me when I left Cambridge. Nine? Yes, I have this knack for mathematics, you see, so my financial prospects wouldn't be too bad, would they? They sound nine times better than mine do. Yes, well, uh, you're in business, or rather, uh, out of business. It would work, uh, wouldn't it? Uh, yes, uh, all you've got to do is uh, find one of your brother officers, you know, one of them wizard prang merchants, and, and you're laughing. Off you go into the white blue yonder. Oh, no, I couldn't. Not with them. Oh, I wouldn't want my baby to go up like one of them. Besides, I make them feel uncomfortable. You what? Don't you believe it? They'd fall over no, themselves. No, no, they think I'm rather strange. I keep insulting them. But you're a smashing drop of goods. No, it's my attitude that puts them off, you see. My legs may not be bent, but my mind certainly is. Yes, of course it is. You're bonkers, but lovely with it. There's not many like you about, I can tell you. You don't mean that. I do. I'm unique, you mean. You are. Yes? Yes. A dumb egghead. There are very few and far between. Well, you're not just saying that. I, I, I mean it. You think my attitude, my, my mind attractive, I mean? You're crazy or just pretty. No, you're crazy, I can see. I think you're attractive in all departments. I do. I'm not just giving you the chat. Oh, please do. Give me the chat. You're beautiful all over. Honestly, please go on. Oh, yes. Uh, weird, erratic, dizzy, all those things. But I like that. You don't think I'm too bossy? Who said you were? A punch em. Yes? Who said that about you? Oh, some of the odd chaps I've been out with. One of them said he only went out with me because he thought I needed the company. Of course, that was after I told him he was the oldest Battle of Britain pilot in the business. He took you out because he was sorry for you? Well, that's what he said. Well, what about the others? Well, they all ended like that. But it's them that's found me, not you. It's them, not you. That's the nicest thing that anybody's ever said to no, me. I'm not being nice. I'm just telling you the facts of life. You're the most exciting bird I've ever met. Talking to you and listening to you is like uh, breathing the air on some Andes plateau. I've never been there, but I've always fancied it. Really? Shall we have another drink, then? Well, why not? It's not every day I smash all my samples. And you really think I'd make a responsible mother? Of course you would. There's nothing irresponsible about you. You'd make a lovely mum. I'd be very proud to have you as the mother of my children any day of the week. You would? Without hesitation. Say it again, is it? Half a bitter and a gin and bit of lemon, please. Small gin. My star said that Venus was entering the house of Mars, so I proposed to Shirley at a young conservative dance. Doing a rock and roll we were. That seems to have gone out now. Anyway, we got engaged, and things were going along quite fine. Her parents never fancied me, so...
We called it a day. It's my hat in your way. Yes, it is. I've got five minutes to do here on the private. Oh. Just a bit of go outside, then. I just do in here, mate. Shall we spend our last ten minutes on the veranda? Yes. The gherkin. Phew. No clouds at all. Tell me about your second fiance. Beryl? Oh, she was three years later. I met her at a socialist rally. I tried a different party, you see, but it was still disaster. Unstable, she said, and packed me up four months after we were engaged. Going to the fix we were, a walking arm in arm up the high street, and she sees this coffee table in this furniture shop window. Look, Bill, she said, that's just what we want for our new house. Well, I, I looked in. It had a map of the world on the top. A sort of laminated photo with the British Empire in red. Great big angry blotches of red they were. Well, this was a few years ago, my. Well, she went mad. I'd never seen her looking so happy. That's just the sort of table that takes people popping in for coffee in its stride, she screamed in my ear. Only ten guineas, too. It'll look twice that on the number rugs that Uncle George is giving us. Well, quite suddenly, I realized I wasn't the man for her. I tried to carry on as normal, but being a woman, she realized I'd gone peculiar, and she packed me up the following week. Married an estate agent six months later. I often go over and see them. And have coffee on the British Empire? Well, I wasn't being normal about that coffee table, was I? Everybody said so afterwards. I see why you broke it off. No, uh, she broke it off. I think you allowed her to break it off. You understand, don't you? Yes. Why didn't I marry her then? Because her happiness was completed by that coffee table. You saw then that her values were different from yours. You should have realized earlier. But then I didn't realize about my fiancé either. There are a couple of right ones then. I don't know. I don't know much about anything. You knew about diluted gin. Oh, I can show the flag all right. There's nothing inside, though. A bomb sight with a photographic memory, that's me. You always have those gentle eyes. All the things happen to you. Apart from my coffee table, you mean? Yes. Is it experience that makes you look so ineffable? No, I don't think I've got anything to be ineffable, is it? About? I used to get a bit narked as a lad when girls said I was odd. Now that I'm 36, I don't mind. I mean, we're all stuck with ourselves, aren't we? And after you're 15, the mold is set, I reckon. You don't change the shape of your character much after then. Why can't I say that in three words, like you do? You like me? I like you. I like you. Oh. There we are. That sorted that out. Not quite. My baby. Would you oblige me? I'm sorry. I didn't quite Would hear you? what... Just once. It might not work, of course, and if it didn't, well, I'd, I'd just have to soldier on, but I wouldn't try with anyone else. What? Oh, well, you said you liked me. It was your idea in the first place. I, I, I'd have never thought of it on my own. You see, I haven't met any man this past three years whose child I'd like to have. I'd like to have yours, though. It's true that I've only known you one day, but I like you better than any man I've met since Cambridge. Me? Yes. It does sound odd, doesn't it? But it only sounds odd. It feels quite natural to me inside. I know that most people will say that we're strangers, but just now I can't remember a time when I didn't know you. Do you mean me? I don't want involvement. I've been involved before, and it ended up by turning on the gas. Is it me you're talking to? We could go somewhere tonight, and in the morning we could part and never see each other again. But I'd never forget you, and I'd always remember how much I liked you. It is me you're talking about. Yes. Oh. Does it seem so strange? It happens every day. Yes. And if it didn't work, I'd sign on for life in the WAF. You see, it's touch and go with me now. It is? I'm not a tart, you know. No. I mean, no, of course not. There was a group captain who came down on a welfare inspection, but that was two years ago. But I'm not a loose woman, I swear to you. Will you? You're having me on. You think that? You think I joke about having a baby to laugh about? That'd be just immoral. No, no, what I meant was, wouldn't you rather wait until you met someone you loved? I found somebody I loved, and that was disaster. I'm too frightened to love somebody now. Oh, but me? I'm nobody to write home about. I've no one at home to write to. 
And what's a baby going to gain by having me as its father? I'm as bright as a tanner up a chimney sweep. Flew. They never sweep their own chimneys. <laughs> you make me laugh. Isn't that enough? That barge is just going through the lock. If you don't say something by the time the gates close, I'll change my mind. It's just that I wouldn't want any baby to inherit my failure, that's all. I think you're lovely. But your failure is the nicest thing about you. This lovely failure all over you. Your receding hair, and the pink islands of scalp showing through. Your mock tartan tie, your Christmas cracker cufflinks. Oh, you're a bonanza failure to me. I do sound pretty sensational, don't I? Look, I, I don't know how that barge is doing, but how are you having me on? The lock keeper's winding his wheel. I mean it, everything. Of course. The baby might grow up like you. I never thought of that. Right, yes, I'd be honest. Uh, well, uh, ask me if I want to, then. I mean, you're the man. It wouldn't be right if I made the suggestion. No. No, of course not. No. Will you? Me? Yes. You. What's your name? Audrey. Oh. Will you then, please? Audrey? Uh, it might not work, of course. And in any case, uh, uh, when it came to it, you, you might not fancy me. I, I, I wouldn't be upset, not even surprised. It's happened before. Well, no, 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 not quite like this. Where do you live? I don't know. Have I got it right? I'm asking you if you will. I'd be charmed. Oh. Thank you. Just tonight, you understand, and then we part and never see each other again. Yes. And no involvement. Right, no chat. No pretense of mental affinity, no pretense at all, in fact. Right. My head's going round. So's mine. Where should we go? Where do you suggest? Well, it was your idea, so I'll leave it up to you. Right, yes, fine. I passed a hotel coming here that looked cosy. Here. A bunch of grapes. Two stars. Winter tariff, bed and breakfast, 25 volts. Oh, I've got this 214 pounds I told you about. So what? Oh, nothing. It was just an idea. Forget it. Look, there's nothing special about me. I'm just an ordinary commercial traveller. You're not having me on, are you? Are you having me on? I've been on the road 12 years now, you see. And nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Wait, yes. All right. I've had a few girls here and there. Landladies' daughters. Even landladies. But nothing like this. I mean... Uh, well, yes. Okay. We're closed. Just wanted to use the telephone. Out there. What name shall I give? My name? Oh, no, I'd rather not. Mr. and Mrs. Frank Howe. How do you spell it? I left school when I was 14. Which I had. H-A-L-S. Oh, uh, good morning. Could I book a double room for tonight, please? Have you got one? Oh, good. It's for Mr. and Mrs. Frank Howe. Howe. H-A-L-S. I'll have dinner. Half past six to eight. Yes. Hmm? Have. Thank you. See you at seven. Right. Can I have your glasses, please? I don't want to lose my license. Sure. I'll continue with good health.
Hello, Bill. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to find a wife to stand in for my duty officer. Took longer than I expected. Oh, that's all right. What's the matter? You look... You look stunning. Thank you. You look as though you've just stepped out of a bandbox. Is it bandbox? I'm never quite sure. Yes. You look as though you've just bought those togs. They're marvellous. I have. Glad you like them. Smashing. It's a cold wind out. I think. Shall we have dinner then? Yes. If you've had second thoughts, I quite understand. No. Have you? No. You feel just the same. Better. I feel lovely. You look smashing. Oh, thank you. Eat then, shall we? Yes. The dining room's this way. made a success of me. Suddenly, I'm not a nothing anymore. Suddenly, I don't want to be a nothing anymore. I never were. Seventeen calls I made this afternoon on shops. And suddenly, I found I didn't need any samples. I just walked in, uh, slowly of course, and I, I told them, straight. I said my cherries were the greatest, the most delicious, succulent mouthfuls of goodness they could buy. One chap, uh, manager of a supermarket he was, my third call after I left you, he said there wasn't any demand. Didn't even look in my direction, he didn't. Just went on, arranging his frozen food display. Well, usually when they're like that, I just shove off. But as I got to the door, I thought of you. I thought, no. No, mate. This time I'm ready to win. If there's no demand, I'll create a demand. So I left my order book in its frozen food compartment. You know, accidentally on purpose. And then when I got outside, I stopped three housewives as they were going in and told them to ask for cocktail chilies. I said they'd be all right as the bloke didn't have any, but just to ask as a favor for me. Well, I went back half an hour later to pick up my book and he gave me an order for a grocer bottle. How's that? I think you're a genius. No, it's not me. It's you who's got me the biggest order I've ever had for my cherries and gherkins. You. I keep seeing your face. And I know. I just know I'll win. You make me want to win. I know I could sell anything now. Anything you care to name. You always could. You're the most successful thing I've ever met. I am? Yes. You don't know what a successful person you've made of yourself. Audrey. We don't have to... Uh... Look, what I mean is, we could get married very quickly in a registry office. And if it didn't work out, I'd promise I'd shove off and give you quick grounds for divorce. Would you marry me? Bill, don't. I can't, even if I wanted to. Something inside stops me. Bill... Don't get involved, just like me. All right. All right. I wonder how long that crack's been in the ceiling. I wonder. It's a very comfortable room you've got us there. Yes. Not too bad. The bed's very comfortable. Not too bad. I wonder how often they clean the windows. A bit murky, aren't they? Yes. Must get an awful lot of soot from that chimney stack. Yes. See, it's smoking now. And they must have all gone home ages ago. We're smoked to stone at the camp. Really? Yes. He had all the stoves changed last year. It's 
the diesel fuels that get me in the throat. Yes, they do get right down the lungs, don't they? Especially when you're driving along hour after hour like me. I don't blame you if you've gone off me. What do you mean? You know. No. If I've gone off anyone, I've gone off myself. I suddenly feel very responsible. Oh, that's all right. Don't think about that. It's my responsibility. Don't you worry about that. I really could support my child on my maths, even if I went part-time. What's the diameter of that lampshade? Roughly. One foot five. Roughly. Uh, Seventeen squared times three point one four one six. That lampshade has a surface area of seven hundred and fifty point seven five four four square inches. It's useless information. But then a lot of people have paid to find that out. So you haven't gone off. I feel much better. Now you say you like me. Cast off arm. <coughs> Come in. Ma'am, light up. W Miss Inkskip has just arrived to say goodbye. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. And I'm sorry you're going, Ma'am. We'll miss you. Everything you wish yourself, Audrey. The old place won't be the same without you. It couldn't have happened to a nicer officer, Ma'am. It's a copy of the new mother. My sister swears by it. I'll read it from cover to cover. Oh, thank you, Sergeant Padmore. I didn't expect anything like this. I was just going to go. Oh, Sergeant Dawson. I knitted it myself, Mom. Oh, I'm sorry I've been sharp with you, Sergeant. I didn't mean it. It's very unexpected of you all. Oh, Sergeant Kelly. Oh, it's just some routine. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Thank you. I have enjoyed your company over the years. You've become part of my life. And I won't forget you and your kindness. None of you. Good luck, Audrey. Thank All the best, you. Audrey. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 Sergeant Killick. Javelin 6010. Very good, Mum. Come in. Oh, Audrey. Thank you, Sissy, for all your help. Oh. <laughs> Well, I had hoped to uh, give you a matinee jacket, but... I never knew you could knit. No, I can't. But we're none of us too old to learn, are we? No. Well, do sit down, Audrey. Thank you. Well, I'm sorry you're going, Audrey. I can't pretend I'm not. But still, perhaps it's right. Right for you. Yes, we must each of us find our own feet. I found mine when I joined up. And I think that you found yours now. I found my feet, Mum. I'm sorry I called you stiffy. <laughs> That's all right. They all do. I've known that for years. Still, gives them a chuckle, so I don't mind. Do you know where you're going to live? Well, I've rented a little cottage in Northampton, near where I was brought up. Once I'm settled, I'd like to send for the rest of my things, if I may. Yes, yes, yes. It's all laid on. Well, I hope everything goes smoothly for you, Audrey. You've been sick most mornings this week, so everything seems to be going according to the book. Yes. Nothing to worry about. No. <clears throat> well, all the best, Audrey. Goodbye, then, Stiffy. Smashing, spitting good luck, Audrey. Goodbye. My mother said I should never cry with my face. Go into it. 
child well will sell you a bottle of my jellies. Every shop is stopped up for life. It's taken me two months to do it, but Chardwell is now saturated with top of chairs. The Gherkins have been dropped, you know. Never caught on. Oh, Bill. We agreed. I had to come back to find out. Did I uh, bring you luck? It's due in October. Magnificent. Oh, Bill. I've got nothing for anybody. You've got my son. My daughter. You've made me a success. What more can any man want from a woman? I love you, Audrey. Do you? I never thought you'd come back. I'm not sure I wanted you to, in a way. I'm not going to bolt. I want you for life. Yeah. Are you sure? Yes. That'd be so insulting to you. Of course. But you're very inspiring with it. You're a real meal ticket for me, make no mistake about it. <laughs> you do make me laugh. <laughs> Let's go down to the town hall, fill in the forms. Yes. Let's fill in the forms. 